Okay, the other day I was working on my uh, laptop uh, after having uh, SPSS version 25 installed and uh, I ran across an error when I was running the um, Univariate um, ANOVA. Uh, basically I was going through Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate, and after specifying the model, um, when I clicked on Options and clicked on Homogeneity Test, that's where the, the uh, error came from. It was an application error. It basically caused uh, the program to crash. Um, after doing a little bit of research on the web, um, I found, uh, uh, you know, uh, right here, uh, this is uh, a link uh, to the IBM website, and they basically are kind of suggesting the download a fix pack uh, right here. So. Um, Basically, uh, our IT guys um, at my university helped me get it uh, situated. Um, if you're so, that is something to to note is that you can go to this fix uh, central and uh, theoretically um, include the uh, patch or the fix, and it should work. Um, if you're not as well versed in that, or you're waiting for some help or assistance from IT folks, um, and you still want to run your analysis and you need Levine's test. Uh, there is a way of doing that, and I'm going to show you that really quickly. So here I have a data set uh, from some previous examples, and I've got uh, two factors right here. I've got uh, pre-test knowledge and post-test knowledge. Uh, this is actually in part from an ANCOVA demonstration. So uh, what I'm going to do is just show you a way of getting Levine's test um, uh, through a kind of a computational solution. And it's not that involved, but it does take just a little bit extra work. So uh, first off, what I'm going to do is just look at um, generating Levine's test where I'm uh, comparing intervention groups on uh, post-test knowledge measure. So what I'm going to do is uh, go to Analyze, um, General Linear Model, Univariate, and I'm going to just show you first what it's going to come out as when I run the analysis. So this is just basically a one-way ANOVA. I'm clicking on Options and Homogeneity Test. And as I said before, when I ran this previously, uh, on my laptop before getting the fix, it would crash. So just showing you what Levine's test looks like, you can see that uh, here is Levine's test right here uh, with the significance level and so forth. So what we're going to be looking for is a computational version of this to get us the same results. So if you are crashing, the way to do this uh, is to, uh, when you're running your model, um, obviously don't click on that if, it's, if, if, if that's what's causing the crash. And instead, you can click on Save Unstandardized Residuals right here. When you click on Continue and then on OK, you'll see that within your data set, you'll get uh, the, um, the unstandardized residuals, which in the context of a one-way ANOVA is nothing more than the difference between uh, a given case's score on the dependent measure and the mean for uh, the group. So next up, you go to Transform Compute Variable and create the absolute value of the residuals. So it's just, a, um, I'm just creating a new variable called ABS RES right here. And then I'm going to type in under numeric expression ABS. And then uh, I have uh, RES underscore one, which is that variable in the data set, uh, in, in closed in parentheses. I'll click on OK. And so now what you'll see is that variable showing up in the data set. And if you just perf uh, perform um, a one way ANOVA, on the absolute value of those residuals, I'm going to click off of save right here. And uh, option should, again, should not have that click. When you uh, run the uh, one way ANOVA, in this case, you'll see uh, for the corrected model right here, you see uh, there's our F value, significance level, and so forth. There's our degrees of freedom. And basically, this is Levine's test. Um, so, in a nutshell, what we've done, if you'll go up here, you'll see uh, for Levine's test, there's our p value of 0.838. Uh, the uh, F value for the Levine statistic is 0.178 and again that's the same thing as what we have down here with the 0.178 and 0.838 so we just basically performed uh, a, a one-way ANOVA on the absolute value of the residuals uh, from the one-way ANOVA. Uh, this also works with a factorial ANOVA so uh, I'm actually going to delete that go uh, go back and rerun and I'm going to include uh, gender ID as another um, uh, factor, uh, post-test knowledge. Just again to show you the the difference. I'm gonna or, or show you that we're getting the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and click on homogeneity test here, run it so that we can see the Levine's test value, which is um, you can see there's the statistic 0.539, 0.539, 0.539, 0.539, 0.539, 0.539, 0.539, 0.539, 0.539, 0.539, 0.539, 0.539, 0.539, 0.539, 0.539, 0.539, 0.539
and uh, there's the um, p-value of 0.746. So if I rerun the analysis, and I'm going to click off of this, and we'll click save and unstandardize right here. So again, now we have our column and our data set of the uh, unstandardized residuals. So this would be the, the difference between the observed uh, value on the dependent variable and the cell means um, reflecting the intersection of the intervention and gender ID uh, levels. So in this particular case, we'll go back to transform compute variable. And I'm just going to leave this the same way since I went ahead and deleted uh, this earlier. And so we'll just create a new absolute value of those residuals here. Click on OK. And when I run the one-way ANOVA in this case, or excuse me, the factorial ANOVA in this case, with the absolute value of the residuals there, um, I will click on OK. And so now you can see that the F value is 0.539. Significance level is 0.746, which, again, is exactly the same as what we had uh, up here. So that's with the uh, factorial an ANOVA. Um, if you're doing ANCOVA, it's a little bit different. Uh, basically, to do this with uh, ANCOVA, let me go back here. Uh, what we'll do, I'm, again, I'm going to delete these. Um, so when I'm running the ANCOVA, uh, I'll put post-test knowledge in. I'm going to put pre-test knowledge in as the covariate. And again, we'll just go ahead and generate the homogeneity test just at, for a point of comparison. We'll click on OK. And so now you can see that uh, our Levine's test uh, result, um, this is it right here. So the F value is 0 0.533 and uh, significance is 0 0.75. So if I want to um, run the analysis and generate those residuals instead, Um, so now I've got my column of the residuals, and so this is basically the difference between the observed scores on post-test knowledge and the adjusted cell means. Um, and so in this particular case, we'll, we'll again, we'll compute the absolute value of, um, of the residuals, so I'll just do that again. And then we'll rerun the analysis, so, um, oops, so I'll click off of that. And uh, we'll take this out, and we'll also take post-test knowledge out. We'll put the absolute value of the residuals in. And uh, in this case, when I click on OK, you'll see that we get the 0.533 for the F value, 0.75 for the uh, P value. So uh, again, this is what we had run before when we asked for Levine's test. So uh, if, you, if you incorporate the covariate, you're not going to get the same value. So basically, um, when you're dealing with Levine's test, you're really just looking at differences between groups in terms of the residuals, um, but you're not really, um, you know, um, relating the uh, the covariate uh, to the residuals in the same way. So uh, that that is a little bit of a, a difference. So if you are running the one way or the factorial designs, um, then the original approach will work just fine, uh, where basically you just run um, the the model. Uh, the one-way or factorial model with the absolute values of the uh, residuals as your dependent variable and um, and then just take the uh, corrected model um, F value and that will be your Levine's test. If you're running the model with a covariate, one or more covariates involved, then you'll run the model, the original model with the covariate, click on save uh, unstandardized residuals, uh, take the absolute value as before and then rerun the model um, with the absolute value of the residuals in there, but removing the, 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 the covariates that you had in your original model, and that will give you Levine's test as well.